Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 it says have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go so God is there literally as an overseer he's there as an overseer he's there to watch and to make sure that everything that he commanded us and whatever we do shall come to pass will rule and have dominion I want you to think of yourself you know as one that are establishing a new development you know these guys have got all the resources they've got all the monies they've got everything to do the new development but nothing is going to be built unless excavation has been done come on now when you know the costing of construction you will find out it's not the roof, it's not the walls, it's not the, the, the electrification, the air conditioner, uh, air conditioning as, as well as all the uh, cosmetics that goes with the building that are the, one of the most expensive items that goes into the building. If you go into construction and you see what it costs to excavate, my goodness. Labor might cost you 150 rand. Now, excavation costs yellow metal machinery. The heavy, the heavy lifters, the, the guys that does the heavy lifting on that site. Come on. It costs maybe 15,000 rand. When you have all, if you add up the cost of all that uh, uh, yellow metal uh, your machinery that's on that site, it might cost up to 15,000 rand per hour to do the heavy lifting, to excavate. And when you look at your total cost of excavation, on a, a, it, it sometimes becomes 5% or 10% of the total cost of the project. When you look at that, you say, man, this is, this is, not, this is not on. It's a, why is it such a, a you know, a, a heavy price? Because, you know, there are uh, what they call boulders on site. There are, you know, there, there are underlying conditions. There, are, there is soil that is not good enough that has got to be removed and have to be replaced with better soil, etc. For them to have a platform on which the new building can be built. Jesus Christ did the heavy lifting for us. If you look at uh, uh, Psalm 22 and you look at Isaiah 53, you see how literally, you know, uh, uh, the sins of this world plowed through his body. Come on, saints. Ripped him apart. Set the platform, set the tone. And all that we need to do, we need to come and build upon that rock. When Peter saw who Jesus was, he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And upon this rock, I will establish my church. And because this rock has been solid, you know, remember he says, uh, behold the rock from where you have been hewn, where, from where you have been taken out. You know, that this rock has, is a solid rock. It is a solid foundation. Amen. When you speak about Christ, you speak about the apostle. The forerunner, the one who has come and laid the foundation. And uh, found laying foundations is an encumbersome thing. Laying foundations, it's not easy. Because you've got to break through hard ground. Laying foundations uh, mean that you have got to go to the depths uh, that is required for that building, you know, to be built on. And sometimes, uh, you know, laying the foundation can be a three to six months process. And after you've broken ground six months ago, you might ask the question, why do I don't see any building? And the guys are going down deep. And the reason why there's no building is because they are literally making preparation for, for the height of the building. The height is not determined by, the, by how you build. But the height is determined of how deep you go. The minute you say, I'm going to build a high-rise building, we don't have them in Queenstown. But the minute you say, you've got to build a high-rise building, then there is depth required. Sometimes in some, some cities, the, the, the water table doesn't allow us. Because, you know, uh, your, your top surface is just a crust. 
But you know, then there is, there are, as we stand here, you know, the water table of Queenstown is very high. And let me just say this, you know, there are lakes under, this, under, under, under where we're standing. We don't just have Bongolo Dam. There are seas under this crust where we stand. The water table of Queenstown is huge and it's very high. Now you can't see that with your natural eye. So when, when, when a building has to go up, you've got to take a lot of things into consideration and you've got to ensure or you've got to make sure that the, the foundation is laid properly. You and I don't have to worry about the foundation because Jesus Christ laid down his life. He is our solid rock. I say he is our solid foundation. He paid the price in order for him to lay that foundation. Now that we have such a powerful foundation, now that we've got such a great foundation, you know, the word of God says we should not neglect this great gospel. We should not neglect, you know, this great salvation because if we neglect this salvation, what else do we have? There's a blueprint that has been given unto us and God has made his intention you know, about this kingdom, you know, he has made it known to us right from the beginning. I say right from the start, God told us where he intends going with this kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, I've given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will by any means hurt you. So every head, you see, when you, when you want to trample upon the snake, you don't trample on his body. Come on, you go after headship. I say you go after headship, you only go after the head. If you crush the head, you've dealt with the snake. We know that Jesus Christ has bruised the head of that powerful devil or that demon or that uh, uh, a devil that has been in the earth you know remember Satan came with one intention was not to come and smile and, and, be, and look nice the enemy came with one intention is to take over is to rule that was the intent of his heart right from the beginning then Satan's problem is you came I say you came because you were created in the image and the likeness of God who was God? God was a ruler what did Satan say? He says, I will, build, I will establish my throne above the throne of God. So his, his, his intent right from the beginning was to rule. Hello? So when you came, you became an immediate threat. Because when Satan looked at you, he doesn't see you for who you are in this fashion. He sees you as a man or a woman created in the likeness of God. And who is God? God is a ruler. Forget about that beautiful image of God that you see on pictures. That's not who God is. Come on. God has come to rule. He has come to reign. He has come to restore order back in the earth. That's the reason why he came. That's why he came amongst us. When we look at God, when we look at heaven, and when we look at the angels of God, and everything, you know, that is surrounding us, from the heavens, there's a throne. There are angels. There are 24 elders. Come on, saints. In the heavens, uh, you know, there is Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. We are seated with Christ. Not next to Christ. There's not another seat for us next to God. It's not God, Christ, and then us. Hello? Christ is the head. We are the body of Christ. So when Christ is seated on the throne, we are seated in Christ. Amen. Come on, saints. So what Christ can do, you can do. What is his function? His function is to in intercede. Hello? His function is to stand in the gap. His function is, you know, to make sure that Everything that is not right in the earth, he will, he will uh, be our advocate. Hallelujah. On your behalf, so that the kingdom of God in the earth can function. Hallelujah. So, 
Jesus Christ has empowered us. I want you to write down this word. Say, I have been empowered. Hallelujah. To overcome evil. And he demonstrated uh, uh, this to us when he gave us power, or when he gave us power in his kingdom over every spiritual force. When he gave us power over spiritual wickednesses in high places. When he gave us power over strongholds of darkness. When he gave us power over, you know, every serpent, every scorpion. Hallelujah. These are systems in the earth. Come on, saints. When you go to China everywhere, uh, you know, in that city, I don't say the Chinese is the devil. No, no, no. But when you go, there's symbolism. They show the dragon. They show the serpent. They so show in certain regions, in certain areas, you know, that is the emblem. Hello? So what God is saying to us, he says, he gave us power over every system in the world. Come on, saints. He says, behold, I gave you power. Now, we need to claim that power. We need to uphold that power. There's no country, saints, that doesn't have what I would call, for a lack of a better term, a coat of arms or a crest or, you know, something that symbolizes who they are. Why? It is because they show, you know, th this is that system that they've been given up. We know what our, uh, our symbol is. We have Christ Jesus who is what? He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. What does that speak, speak of? It speaks of power, it speaks of a dominion, and it speaks of power. Can you say amen? Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 says, And Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, co uh, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness amongst the people. So wherever the kingdom is preached, everything that does not align with the kingdom is dispelled. Come on, saints. I want you to demonstrate that in your personal lives. Every time when you hear, before you say, as Bethlehem. Or uh, before you say a uh, doctor, whatever, before you, we, 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 before you, you call on, on those, on those uh, external, I don't say don't go to the hospital, I say don't say go, don't go to the doctor, but before you call on those uh, you know, external forces, I want you to call upon the name of Jesus. I want you to lay hands on the sick. It must be natural. Hallelujah. Before you, 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 before you take that medication, just ask your husband, just lay your hands. I'm talking about laying hands to pray, not laying hands. I say, lay, lay, just ask your husband to lay his hands on you. Amen? Ask your wife, lay hands on me. And the word of God says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. The word of God says the trees of the field are for the healing of the nations. He sent forth his word in order to heal. If there's no one around you, just speak the word of God. Just read the word of God and speak God's word, you know, over your body, over your, or your, 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 that, that part of your body that is aching, that part of your body, you know, where the sickness is. Leave God's word there. When you leave God's word somewhere, when you park God's word, you know, the, the living word, when you park God's word, you know, into that sickness, into that, that disease, I always say something is going to change. And the word of God is stubborn. The word of God doesn't take no for an answer. The word of God never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So sickness will come and it will go. But I want to tell you the word of God is consistent. It will never change. God's word will cause sickness and disease, you know, to leave your body. Amen. Matthew chapter 13 verse 31 to 32. And he told them another parable. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Hallelujah. It is small in size. So when you, when you speak of the kingdom, it might look small in size. Remember what he said. He says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, 
You don't need to acquire a lot of faith and sound, you know, like a, 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 a walking encyclopedia, you know, a, a, a reciting scriptures. It's good to know the scripture. It's new to, new, good to know the word of God. But I want to tell you, all that you need is just the size of a mustard seed. And you will say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. There are many mountains in our lives. I say there are many mountains in our lives. There are many things, saints, that you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And you ask yourself, how am I going to deal with this? Remember, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. The kingdom of God has the power. It has got the ability to deal with everything that comes your way. Hallelujah. So what, what does that scripture tell us? It speaks about the exponential growth and the influence of the kingdom. And that influence is not something that is, uh, you know, a, 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 an influence right here on a Sunday morning only in the church. But wherever you go, that power is available to you. Hallelujah. Remember, when, when, G, when, God, uh, or when Jesus Christ spoke to Peter, he says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Mark chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. The word of God says, uh, When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, The little children come to me, and do not hinder, hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom like a little child will never enter into it. So, you know, sometimes we want to make it complicated. But I want to just say to you this morning, saints, uh, you know, what we need to do is we need to accept it, you know, like a child. Yes. Well, child like faith. You can tell a child anything. He will believe you. Amen. And he wanna, he's going to trust you and know that... You can do all things because he, he doesn't see your ability. He doesn't know your ability, but he has faith to trust in you. Amen. So what does God's kingdom represent? It represents the rule and the authority of God in every area of our lives. It's not reserved, you know, for certain areas of, of your life. It's not reserved for, you know, some areas and and not in other areas of your life. God's kingdom, you know, has power in each and every area of your life. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors through God. We are making His appeal through us. Amen. So God operates through you in the earth when there's an ambassador the president doesn't have to go there because everything that the ambassador says the president uh, sorry uh, everything the president says the ambassador can do the same because he represents the authority of that nation in that specific country we don't have to move the union buildings or move authority from the, the union buildings into Washington, D.C. As long as there's an embassy. In fact, do you know that the power of an embassy or the power of an ambassador is such that it, it has got what they call diplomatic immunity. So, when a South African citizen goes to the United States of America and you go to uh, the embassy in Washington, when you step through those gates, technically, you are no longer in the United States. Come on, saints. Technically, you find yourself in South Africa. And all rules of South Africa apply whilst you are inside there. So America does not have jurisdiction over you because you are inside the South African embassy. Come on. Now, the word of God says that you and I are Christ ambassadors. Through God, we are making his, uh, God is making his appeal through us. So everything that God wants as an ambassador, he is not going to come 
is going to do it through you. That's the power and authority that you have in his kingdom. So wherever you are, the rule of heaven applies. Oh, you don't hear me. Because you are in Langeberg Street, the rule of heaven applies there. Think about your street where you live. The rule of heaven applies there. Because that's where you reside. Come on. Wherever you walk, wherever you go, the rule of God applies there. Amen. Now listen to this. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 to 20 he says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Amen. So God gave us power. He gave us authority so that everything that he taught us. What did he teach us? He taught us his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything that he taught us ap applies in that area. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. He says, Now to each one the manifestation of the spirit is given for common good. Amen. God has given us the manifestation of the spirit. Now you're not going to do what God has called you to do in your own strength, in your own power. When you speak, the spirit of God brings into manifestation everything that you say. Hallelujah. I say that is how it works. It doesn't, it's not by might, it is not by power, but it is by the spirit of God. So you don't have to be concerned. Hey, these, these, you know, to take authority over principalities and powers is going to be difficult. To heal the sick is going to be difficult. To see men and women's lives transformed and changed is going to be difficult. The word of God says, I've given you power and I'm going to, I've given you authority and nothing shall be difficult to you. Where does the power and where does the authority come from? The power and the authority comes from, the word of God says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you received the Spirit of God in your life? Amen. 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 Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, he says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So God is there literally as an overseer. Joshua 1 verse 9. He's there as an overseer. He's there to watch and to make sure that everything that he commanded us and whatever we do shall come to pass. You don't do this in your own strength. Hallelujah. Remember he says the kingdom of God is within you. It doesn't come with observation. It is within us. Who is in us? The one who has brought the kingdom for us. It is Jesus Christ. He lives and he abides on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 19 gives the same account. He says, I've given you power to trample upon snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The word of God says he gave you power to overcome all the power of the enemy. Everybody say all the power. So if, if he gave us power and authority to overcome all the power of the enemy, that means there is nothing left for the enemy to do. Because all the power is subject to the authority that God has given unto us. Amen. Now sometimes you will see when a demon manifests and you'll see, you know, when, when, when you are confronted with a situation in your life, you know, it's almost as if this thing becomes stubborn. And it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to part. That thing needs to be uprooted. You need to ap apply the X by the root. You need to apply the authority that God has given unto you. Amen. Tomorrow evening, we are going to deal in the prayer meeting with, with stubborn demons. Come on. In any area of your life, tomorrow night, we're going to have a communion. And when we, when we pray for the people of God, we're going to deal. You know the areas in your life 
where you've been struggling. It's been months, some, for some of you it's been years, you know, and years and years trying to deal, you know, with certain things in your life. And I tell you, there's uh, created some form of discouragement in your life because this thing has been coming on for a long time and it's almost as if it does not want to relent. Say tomorrow night. We are dealing with every stubborn devil. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Please don't bring your husband tomorrow and say, God said, I must bring you here because we need to deal with every stubborn devil. No, no, no. no. Uh, the demons is a spirit. Sometimes we, we want to see something in the physical realm. So you someone turn to your husband, you drag him in the, in the house of God, you say, Apostle said, tomorrow we're dealing with... No, 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 no. Not what I'm saying. First Corinthians, sorry, First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, he says, You are a chosen people. You are a royal priest to the holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen? So the word of God says, you have been chosen for this thing. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. And he, you, he, he chose you and set you apart. Now let me just say this. Uh, we know that uh, when, when it comes to athletes or it comes to a soccer team or a springbok team or whatever team, those guys that have been chosen, the nation has an expectation of them. Hello? And we will cheer those guys, but the cheers goes down when, you know, we, they don't live up to the expectation for what they've been chosen. Now, if you go to Hebrews chapter 12, the word of God speaks of a great company of believers that has gone before us. The word of God says, whilst we are compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience this race that has been set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one, he says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Yeah. Amen? Now we are here in this life and not just the angels and the Father and the Son is looking on us. But remember, you know, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, you see the heroes of faith and everybody that has gone before us. And let me just say this, that these guys have paid a price so that you can have the word in your hands. They, they stayed there and they kept on prophesying about this kingdom that's coming. And the word of God says they desired to be a part of this kingdom. They desired to have what we have. They desired, you know, to, to, to be partakers of this great heavenly gift or this heavenly grace that God has given unto us. But what they are is they are just onlookers. But you are the chosen one. I say you are the chosen one. You are in the center of the arena called the globe or called the earth. And there are no limits. There are no boundaries. The word of God says, and I want you to say to your neighbor, the word of God says nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now ask that person, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing shall be possible unto you. You know what? You're going to see yourself praying for things that you should have never prayed for. Crying for things you should have never cried for. Because the word of God says, Nothing shall be impossible unto you. He says, You are more than a conqueror. God has given you everything that pertains unto life and godliness. Amen. And we have the power. It's been given unto us, you know, by the Spirit of God. Last scripture I want to read, uh, you know, for you is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A town built upon the hill cannot be hidden. 
It says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's not the other way around. The Father is not going to be glorified through what He does. The Father will be glorified through the deeds that you do. Now, how many times we come here and we pray, we ask the Father to do this and that and that. God says, no, I can't do it. You do it. The time when you were able to do great things was the time that you got up and you stepped out in faith and you did it. And when you went, stood up and you went out and you went and did the things that the Father told you to do, the Father was glorified. God can be glorified this week through your deeds. I say he can be glorified through your deeds. You can change and transform the lives of so many people. Step out in faith. Go to someone that is stuck, doesn't have a house. Find out their, their life, you know, what, what is it that they need. And I, I don't want you to look at the outward appearance. Come on. There might be people that you think are okay. But they also have needs. Come on. Find out. You say, no, I need this house. Or I need this car. And you say, I will find that house for you. And you pick up the phone and you call the estate agents and you find out where is a house available that will suit the needs of this particular individual. And when you found it, you say, Lord, I've done what you've told me to do. Now you show up. Now it's quiet in the house. You find somebody that, is, that doesn't have a job. Remember, you have power, you have authority. You call a few companies and say, listen here, I've got, a, I, I've got five people that I want to place. They all say, no, we just had a meeting this morning. We're looking for five people. And that person doesn't have to be jobless or unemployed. Because you took the power, you took the authority to do whatever God has called you to do. Amen? I'm not talking about a shelter, people. I'm not talking about a temporary house. I'm talking getting a key and a title deed. Yes. Jesus. Let me just examine this thing quickly. How many people in this house, here yeah, you are, you, you, you don't have a title in your name that can do with a house? Raise your hand. You don't have a house of your own. Raise your hand. You can do with a house. Can you see the need is here? We don't have to go far. I say you don't have to go far. The need is right here under your nose. But you see the hands? Ask the person that raised the hand next to you. How many bedroom house do you want? Stand. Those ones that once that house, raise your hand. Can you stand? There's power. There's authority. Amen. Now those ones of you that doesn't want and I don't want this house. Because you have a house. Mom Yoli, you have a title? You have a title deed of a house? You've got a title deed? I'm telling you, you've got a title deed? Tatamao, you've got a title deed? Kalo, you've got a title deed? Debbie, you've got a title deed? You've got a house? You've got your house? All right? Now, why do you have titles and they should not have titles? Come on. Now listen to this. Now wait, we're going to go one step further now. Those of you 
I'm not going to X chapter 2 now. Those of you that have titles, you've been there. You have the anointing. I say you've, you've been there, you have the anointing, isn't it? You know what it takes to get a house? I don't see Shane now. Shane, Shane, the rapture took place, Shane is gone. <laughs> listen, listen now. Okay, those of you that does not have a title, you don't have a house, and there's others here that sits down, they have a title, they have a house, they know the journey, and they know what it took to get there, isn't it? So now I want you that have a title to go to one who doesn't have a title. And you take this authority and power that God has given unto you and I want you to pray for them. And pray that God... Now ask them questions. What must the house look like? Ah, come Shane, know it. What must the house look like? What must... Ask them questions quickly. Ask them questions. What must the house look like? How many bedrooms? What is it that you're trusting God for? And so on. And then... Whoa, come here. JD, can you go to war and pray for him? Okay. Alright. Anyone, anyone that does not have... A, you don't have a title. But somebody has a title. Okay, that person doesn't have a title, so you go to the person that has a title, and they will pray for you. But I want you to describe the house that you trust in God for. I want you to describe that house because all things are possible. We are transferring this anointing this morning upon the lives of God's people, and now I'm gonna. I want you to pray for them. That God will come through for them. I want you to pray for them. That God will, you know, put the keys in their hands. I want you to pray for them. That God will do, perform a miracle. There are some of you that are watching us on Facebook Live. You don't have a title. You don't have a house. But you are trusting God for your own house. And what we are saying to you this morning. What God can do for the people in this house he will do for you I say he will do for you and we're gonna pray and we're gonna test this thing and we're gonna see over the next three weeks we're gonna see within the next 21 days how God will come through for his people hallelujah the same way that he said I gave you the keys of the kingdom I give you authority I give you power the same way this morning saints I believe by faith that God will put the keys in your hand. I say God will put keys in your hand. Physical keys. He will put keys in your hand so that you can be a property owner. You can be the owner of your own house. You can be the owner of your own home in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Father, that we can declare this morning that all things are possible. And Father, I just sense in my heart the anointing, Father, to take your people out, Father God, out of complacency, out of not, uh, uh, Father God, having their own properties. And I release by faith right now, Father God, the ability to own, the ability, Father God, for them to have their own dwelling place in the name of Jesus. Father, they shall be the head and not the tail. I thank you, Father God, they will no longer rent, but I thank you, Father God, that you will bless them with their own homes in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for those that have been in their positions in years gone by, but I pray right now, Father God, that you remove them, Father God, out of that situation and you place them, Father God, in a position, Father Father, that they can say God has supplied my needs one of the things Lord that you said in your word concerning the kingdom 
Do not take care where you're going to live. Do not take care what you're going to eat. Do not take care of what you're going to wear because your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Today we seek your kingdom. Today we trust you. We today, Father God, we believe you for that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we've made our request known unto you. And I thank you, Father God, for doors that are swinging open in Queenstown in this week. I thank you, Lord, for doors that are opening up wide in this week, Father God, because of your power, because of what you've declared in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.